Ask Reddit. Serious people who have been guests on reality shows such as remodeling, weight loss, porn shows. What really went on? My family won a kitchen Machiavel from the Martha Stewart show. They said they sent us on vacation for the last week of construction, but in reality we stayed home and ate in our basement the whole time. They filmed us driving up the street, had us change our shirts, and then filmed us getting back back from the airport. Can't complain though, the kitchen was nice. Edit, just to be clear, we were never promised a vacation. We were aware it was just something they were telling the audience, because it sounded much nicer than we made the meat in their basement. It actually wasn't bad eating in our basement for a while, but I can understand how that sounds bad. I was on Judge Judy back in 2010. Our case was real and handpicked by the, the production team. We had to pull the case from real court in order to go on her show. The decision of who wins and loses is made up before you even walk into the courtroom set. The audience is all actors paid to sit there. Judge was wearing jeans and slippers under her robe. Also, she's incredibly quiet in real life. As in, I had to really strain to hear her. All in all, I got a paid 3 day vacation to LA and stayed in a decent hotel. I also got paid to be on the show and when I lost they show, paid the other guy for me. Pretty amazing. Really? I was on Homes on Homes in the second season. We had our weird cement bottle sheet floor replaced with granite. The crew were very nice and almost everything was authentic with two exceptions. Work took about two and a half weeks and they presented it as being a two day job. And Holmes didn't do much work on our place, not for lack of ability, but simply because he was busy as hell. His crew were great, and he chipped in, and led where he could. We paid for materials, but the labor was free. I worked on one of the final Extreme Home Machiavel episodes, the 7 in 7 episode where we built 7 houses in 7 days in Joplin, Missouri after a huge tornado wiped out a lot of the city. The construction crews were all run by local general contractors and their teams donating their own time which was really awesome. None of the hosts did any of the real work, they just did a few things for cameras. Type inning 10 was a huge doucher bag endeavor. He only came out of his lavish tour bus for a few minutes at a time to shoot his scenes. The week of the shoot he went and got belligerent drunk at a bar in town and made an ace of himself. I was on what not to wear, Emma. I will say the hours were really long and they don't make you throw everything away. Also Clinton Kelly was one of the nicest people I have ever met. Went above and beyond to help me get clothes that worked, even staying on off camera at the 15th hour of a day to get the right pants. Stussy was nice too. The weirdest things were the up close reshoots. If you pointed at anything while being filmed, they'd come in afterward and do an up close of your hand doing the motion. We learned towards the end to just stop pointing. Throw away and probably too late for anybody to see this. I was a contestant on Survivor, Pearl Islands. For the most part nothing is really scripted, although obviously it's cut way out of order for dramatic effect, I learned you can always tell by the pimples that appear and disappear on contestants from scene to scene. Some people are surprised that we were provided toilet paper and tampons plus a spot to shit and throw away the paper, which was good because most people had to get up to blast a diarrhea dump at least three times a day from eating rice cooked in stagnant filth water. No matter how much they boiled that water it still tasted earthy and had grains of dirt in it. I don't know if this counts, but I'll answer anyway. I was on the MTV game show The Substitute that was structured as a reality show. The premise was that some students were in class expecting a substitute teacher and surprise the substitute teacher the school hired is actually the host of a game show and the students participate in it. Well as you can imagine this was complete bullshit. We found out that we had a chance to be on the show about 3 months before filming and every student over 18 in my high school was allowed to apply for a chance to be on it. Out of the 200 or so people that applied they picked 60, enough for 3 episodes. We had to sign a bunch of contracts and non-disclosure agreements leading up to the actual filming. And then when the day came to film we piled onto buses and drove to a sketchy little studio in Manhattan. 
filming of the three episodes took about 8 hours total and all in all it was an absolute blast, but everything was completely manufactured. If our reactions weren't good enough then we refilmed the segment and the director would come out and tell us what to do. The host would introduce one of the questions in 5 separate ways and they would pick the best one. Also we were told to laugh at every single joke, no matter how cheesy 10 tenths would totally do again, but 0% of it is actual reality. I remember the room had element of like 5 different subjects in it. There were atlases hung on the wall next to biology stuff. Also there were so many lights. There was no ceiling to the room we were in, just dozens of stage lights. It looked kinda like this. Here's the episode if anybody cares. I'm warning you the show is awful. I'm the really tall guy with the long hair. My high school was on a couple of episodes of MTV made. The girl wanted to become more popular and the prom queen. MTV put on a sheet load of different events in her name to encourage us to vote for her. What MTV didn't show was that the reason she was unpopular wasn't because she was overweight or in the band or anything, though both were true. She was unpopular because she was a giant BTCH, like insanely rude and beachy. Needless to say, she did not win prom queen. To their credit, the show didn't try to reshoot it to make it look like she won or anything. I was on American Ninja Warrior. All in all, it's legit. The crowd reactions are often from different runs slash times. The crowd noise may be doctored here and there, the order of the runs may be changed, and the commentary may be redubbed, but that's all minor TV stuff that's expected. Everyone that worked on the show was incredibly nice. It's clearly a TV show more than a pure athletic competition, but that doesn't detract from it in any way, in my opinion. 10 tenths would keep watching. Late to the party here, but I have a relevant story. I lived near Detroit and had an old ozone generating air purifier called a home ozone for sale on Craigslist that I had picked up at a garage sale because it looked cool. I got a call from a production company in California that asked if I would be interested in appearing on hardcore porn. The shop is only a few miles from my house for a chance to sell my item. They offered me $50 for my appearance and I could keep any money that was offered by the shop. I decided to accept, so they gave me a date and time to show up. The place was packed, because they shoot the whole season in a couple days then fly back to California. First I did a brief interview with the camera outside the shop about what I was bringing and how much I wanted for it. Then I was ushered inside where they took my item and told me to wait until I was called up. After browsing for a while, I was called up by one of the assistants, and they brought me to the counter where the main guy leg old with the ponytail was standing. We talked for a bit, and he asked me about where I was from, and explained how the bartering would work. Once the introductions were out of the way, the cameras go on, and he put on his TV character. He seemed like a real nice guy when we were talking but a little sleazy when in character. Mainly the bartering process consisted of him making gay jokes about the name of my purifier and insinuating that I may be a homosexual. He made me an offer for $5 and I turned it down then went on my way with the $50 from the production company. I don't have cable, so I have never watched the show, but my parents watch it and have not seen me on it yet. TLDR. Got paid $50. To go on hardcore porn to be called gay, but when not on camera I seemed like a pretty cool dude. I was on Made, an MTV show about turning nerds into pickup artists slash charming people slash whatever term suits your fancy. Well, technically, rather I was at a party being hosted for the main star of the show. My family and I happened to be vacationing at the Atlantis Resort in Nassau, an island in the Bahamas, when we heard about MTV hosting this party, and 15 year old me figured it would be fun to go. As I walked through the entrance to the party I saw a pretty girl on a seat in the corner. I asked her what she was doing, and she said something along the lines of, they asked me to wait here. From being at the party and later watching on TV, I learned that this was the girl that the star of the show got to go on a date with. In other words, MTV Spoon fed a date to a guy on a show about how to get a date. I can't blame the girl for agreeing to it, she got to be on TV and all she had to do was go to a nice dinner by the dolphin enclosure with a fat nerd. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but confirm to me that, yes, reality TV is as fixed as everyone believes. When I was 10 I was on this show the F word, 
My mum put in an application to be taught how to cook. This was one of the 10 minute things aged within the episode as a side thing because she was getting lazy and we'd always just buy takeaways lol. She got accepted and it was the most fun day. Gordon Ramsay and his crew and him showed up one morning and spent the day with us. We lived in a tiny flat without a dining table, so they bought a beautiful one with them and let us keep it after as well as lots of other goodies. But apart from that, he was such a wonderful guy to us, and when Gordon had finished teaching my mum how to cook paella, we all sat down at the table, my mum, him, me, one of my mum's friends, and ate it all together, and discussed random sheet for like an hour, while the crew packed everything up. I know the episode is on YouTube, but I really can't remember the episode, although with some time, could prob find it. It was 12 years ago though. We had a copy, but it was misplaced while moving. I do have a picture of him, my mum and I though. Such a great guy. Edit. A couple of cool people found the link. Thanks I'm very grateful. I'm the girl with the blue headband on the right of Gordon at the table. Late to the party, and I've posted this before, but here goes. I used to work with Glass Sword Guy who was on Porn Stars Season 1. For those who can't watch the clip, according to the show, Glass Sword Guy supposedly spent several years crafting a sword made of glass that he was then trying to sell to Porn Stars. Porn Stars basically ripped apart the idea of making a glass sword, calling it a piece of crap. In actual reality, Glass Sword Guy's wife owned a stained glass shop in Vegas at the time. The Porn Stars producers went to her store and commissioned the creation of this glass sword. When it was done, they asked Glass Sword Guy to be on the show pretending he was trying to sell it. Might be late to the game here, but I was on Miami Inc. Actually wife got to too, and I was the person there for support. I was on the show for a bit and got to meet most of the cast. Weird parts were how, show was not exactly scripted, but they had a set plan on what they wanted to do and got people to fit the idea they had. We had to pay for all our expenses and pay for the tattoo. It was pretty expensive tattoo was over $800. I was told that was standard, unless special case. All the cast members I met David Duran Brass and Yoji Herida were really cool guys. Amy was not on our episode but was there. He was a little standoffish and refused to sign the Miami Inc book I had brought and didn't want to take a pic with us. He just came off as really rude. Other guys being so cool made up for it. This was right after the season where they had a lot of fights with Cat, but Cat was not there. I asked them if fight on show with Cat were real and they kinda gave me some looks and said that most of the fighting was real. Cat and Amy apparently didn't get along in real like as well. All overall cool experience, but annoying we had to pay for to and all expenses to be on a show that makes money. Episode was titled No Regrets. I was on the old MTV show Yo Mama. Jokers keep a piece of paper with the jokes on it in their pocket, and they pull it out before each line, and memorize the line. The background group had to rehearse several times for the applauds and cheers. I was a cast alternate for Fox's Utopia. What that basically meant is that I had to be constantly ready to drop everything and join the show to replace a voted out cast member. Here's what I can tell you. The show was pitched to me as a survival show. They wanted to know all my skills and how I would handle dangerous situations. The show, in actuality, was all about getting good looking people naked in the man-made, fully stocked lake. The cast had electricity by day 3. I would receive phone calls, asking me if I've been keeping up with the action, and what my feelings were. Knowing full well that they wanted drama, I'd lash out at nearly everyone on the show. They asked me if I could design their e-commerce site better. Yes, this was a survival show, but the group had a ducking e-commerce site to make money. The best thing I got out of the ordeal was a paid vacation to Los Angeles for a week. Got to meet a bunch of wackus and pompous LA executives. Got to meet the guy who created the voice and all that shit. It's 100% as sleazy as you'd expect. My old manager used to own the storage facility that was on one of the really early episodes of Storage Wars. The producers come onto the facility, buy out the units, then proceed to plant valuables in some of them, and weird creepy garbage in others. None of the lucky finds these weirdos get on the show are found by chance, they're all plants. What's sad is people think these sudden storage jackpots are real, 
and are trying the real deal, usually shelling out hundreds of dollars for a unit that only has a moldy mattress and crusty 80s PRM magazines. I was on an episode House Hunters, it's reality television, so it's pretty made up and scripted. They try to make the show like a recreation of you buying a home. In reality, the houses you see you aren't even considering for purchase, as you have already purchased the house you buy at the end of the show. In fact, they only approach you to film the show, if you are either in escrow or later, so that they don't have a bunch of fakers on the program. They play off your personality, so when you are considering the other homes, and even when talking about your own home on camera, you have to say things like oh I really like the fact that it has a pool, then the director will say cut, and he will give you direction. To say something like you hh. I just hate pools, they are so much maintenance essentially they want positive and negative about every little thing, so that the production studios back in New York City can piece together whatever story is most compelling. You have to remember nothing in Hollywood is real, but HH does a pretty good job of creating the actual experience, so that you can compare your lifestyle to others, compare money, etc. Overall was pretty fun. Took about 1.5 weeks to film a 22 minute episode. Probably too late to this party, but I was on hardcore porn, Chicago. How did I get on the show? I was walking home to my apartment after class and a producer asked if I wanted to be on TV. They gave me an Xbox 360 without the cords and said go try to sell this. They gave me tips such as put up a big fuss and act like you're going to start a physical altercation. Funny part about it is that I'm way tinier than their bodyguards, but I got into it with them anyways. When it was done, we all had a good laugh and I went about my business. They also filmed me for the transition shots between scenes. I was on American Idol in 2010. Ryan Seacrest is super short in real life. That was probably the biggest surprise. The crowd gasped when he came out. You audition six at a time in front of producers and production assistants. In my group, they dismissed two people without even hearing them. In the one next to me, they let one guy go through without hearing him. You go through multiple rounds of judging before you met the judges. I remember the crew getting mad because we didn't cheer loud enough for the spontaneous cheering while the camera pans over us. Um, we are supposed to sing. We've been here for six hours. Our voices are already at risk. I was eliminated by Paula, Simon, and Randy, but overall it was an awesome experience.